What I want to talk about in this video is the difference between a within groups analysis and a between groups analysis in a clinical trial in a simplified way. I want to do this because it's coming up with increased frequency in published trials. Now, when you do a clinical trial or a, a prospective trial of some sort, you recruit a group of people who meet the inclusion criteria. You then do some baseline measurements on them to measure a number of characteristics in them. After that's completed, you then randomly assign them to a, a treatment group or an intervention group, intervention, or a placebo or control group. And hopefully the randomization is done properly, it's not done haphazardly, and you, you, you see that error in a number of uh, lower quality journal publications. But after you've done that, when you analyze the data, you then do a statistical test or a series of statistical tests to compare these two groups to show they're the same, to show that the randomization process was successful. That might be age, weight, height, body weight. Um, it hopefully includes the parameter of interest, the outcome measure that you're looking for. So you can, you're really showing that at baseline the groups are the same and quite comparable. Then you follow them through time. Then we'll have an endpoint or an outcome measure that is then done. So when it comes to analysing that data, what you, you see being done with, with increasing frequency is that there'll be a statistical test done comparing the baseline and the outcome. And you know, a p-value will be derived for that, maybe the effect size looked at, and the same will happen here. Uh, the baseline measurement is compared to the outcome measure and a p-value will be obtained. Now hopefully this outcome measure or the endpoint was specified in advance. Um, hopefully there is a primary endpoint and not too many secondary endpoints. I mean, the more um, outcomes you measure, the more likely you are to find a result just by chance. Now, hopefully you can see that's wrong. That you, This is what's called a within groups analysis. We're looking for the, the improvement or worsening there or, or no change there and comparing it to there. That's called a within groups analysis because the analysis is within the group. What should be done is you should be comparing this to this. That is a between groups analysis. That's the appropriate way. That's what you are interested in. Is the intervention or treatment better than doing nothing or giving to them on a placebo? That's a within groups analysis. That is the appropriate way to do it. Um, this is not a difference of opinion on how you should analyse clinical trials. All the textbooks will talk about doing it this way. All the consensus documents will talk about doing it this way. This is how you analyse the outcome. We want to know the difference between the intervention and placebo. What's happening with increasing frequency, especially in lower quality journals, is trial data is being published with the p-value here and the p-value there. This one may or may not be significant, this one may or may not be, but say this one is significant and that one's not. They'll then make the claim that the treatment works. When in reality we don't know. We don't know if it's any better than that. Um, I've seen and I've blogged about a couple of studies that got a statistically significant result here. It wasn't hugely significant and then there was an improvement in the placebo group, but it wasn't statistically significant. So they concluded that intervention worked. But when you look at the number here and the number here, or the actual mean change, there was no difference. The treatment didn't actually work when it was analysed the appropriate way. So you really need to be on the lookout for this between or within groups analysis um, when you're seeing trial or clinical trial studies published.